JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly Market Outlook webinar for the week October the 4th until October the 8th. I am Harlamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have an interesting week ahead of us with two central bank decisions on the agenda, the RBA and the RBNZ. No action is anticipated by the RBA, but the RBNZ is expected to lift the interest rates for the first time since the coronavirus pandemic outbreak. Ahead of those decisions, on Monday, the OPEC uh, Plus Group uh, meets to decide on oil output, while on Friday we get the US employment uh, report uh, for September. Now let's take things in more detail and from the beginning. Uh, on Monday, today, Chinese and South Korean markets uh, stayed closed due to holidays, while no major indicators are scheduled on the calendar for the rest of the day. Therefore, at first glance, it appears to be a quiet day for the markets. However, we do have a meeting between OPEC and its allies to debate um, whether and how much more oil may be needed uh, to be released into the market. In July, the OPEC uh, Plus Group agreed uh, to increase production by 400,000 barrels per day every month, at least until uh, April 2022, in a process to phase out 5.8 million uh, barrels per day of existing cuts. Lately, prices uh, of the black liquids soared, um, surged to a three-year high, driven by supply disruptions and recovering demand from the coronavirus pandemic, as well as due to gas, gas uh, supply uh, shortages. Last week, four sources told Reuters that the group was considering adding more uh, increasing production, in other words, but there were no details on how much more or when any supply increases could uh, take place. Therefore, with that in mind, although October's volumes are already decided, any decision pointing to more increases in the next few months may result in a decent uh, downside correction in oil prices. On the other hand, maintaining the existing deal and providing no clues as to whether a decision to increase output could be looming at one of the upcoming meetings could add further fuel to the fuel's latest uptrend. Now on Tuesday, during the Asian session, the RBA meets to decide on interest rates. At its uh, September gathering, uh, this bank indeed proceeded with the plan tapering from uh, from uh, five billion Aussies to four billion uh, of, of four billion Aussies uh, per week, but um, it delayed the date for a new review from uh, November 2021 to February 2022 due to a delay in the economic recovery and increased uncertainty associated with the outbreak of the Delta coronavirus variant. As for interest rates, officials stuck to their guns that they are likely to keep them at present levels at least until uh, 2024. So taking the prior decision into account, we don't expect any policy changes this week. However, with uh, daily COVID infections staying near record highs, and having also in mind the worsening economic slowdown in uh, China, we will monitor the accompanying statement to see whether it will be written in a more dovish language. Any fresh concerns over the nation's economic recovery could raise speculation that at some point soon the bank may delay even further the timing of its uh, next tapering, thereby adding pressure to the Australian dollar. Conditional upon expectations of a November tapering move by the Fed, uh, increasing, the Aussie could resume its, uh, its recent downtrend against, against its uh, US counterpart. 
And elsewhere in, in Asia, Chinese markets will stay closed until Thursday in celebration of the National Day. From New Zealand, we have the N, uh, NZIER Business Confidence Index for the third quarter, while from Japan, we have the Tokyo CPIs for September. Australia's uh, trade balance for August is also coming out. Later in the day, we have the final composite and services PMIs uh, from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, but as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. The ISM non-manufacturing index for the month is also due to be released and it is expected to, ha is, it is expected to have declined to 60 from 61.7. In our view, this is not uh, a worrisome decline. 60 is uh, still a, a high level for a PMI, so it's unlikely to hurt uh, much expectations over a tapering move by the Fed in November. From Canada, we have the nation's trade balance uh, for August. Now, on Wednesday, the central bank torch will be passed to the RBNZ. When they last met, officials of uh, this bank delayed raising interest rates at a time when the financial community was more than certain over a hike. Policymakers changed their mind after the nation entered the lockdown due to new coronavirus cases. However, they signaled that they still expect to push the hike button before uh, the end of the year. Market participants are betting that such a move could indeed take place at this gathering, but they only anticipated 25 basis points uh, rate increase. Any expectations over a double, uh, double hike may have diminished recently as COVID infections have spiked again, suggesting that the full economic reopening is still away. Therefore, with a, qu with a quarter point hike fully priced in, we don't expect any Kiwi reaction on that. We believe that any move is likely to be triggered by the language in the accompanying statement. Anything suggesting a more cautious hike path could push the Kiwi lower. For the currency to strengthen, we need to see optimistic remarks pointing to faster hikes, a case we see as unlikely for now. Therefore, with all that in mind, we would consider the risks surrounding the Kiwi's reaction to the meeting as tilted to the downside. Later in the day, we have Eurozone's retail sales for August and the US and the US ADP, ADP employment report for September. Eurozone's uh, retail sales are expected uh, to have rebounded 0.8% month over month after sliding 2.3%, while in the US, the ADP report is expected to show that the private, the private sector ca has gained 430,000 jobs, less than August's uh, 374,000. Although the ADP is far from a reliable predictor of the NFPs, it is the only, the only major gauge we have uh, for the official statistic. And thus, it could raise some speculation that the NFPs could also come, uh, could also come in slightly better than, uh, than in August. Thursday is a quiet day in terms of economic releases and data, with the only event worth mentioning being the minutes from the latest uh, ECB monetary policy meeting. At that meeting, uh, the bank announced uh, a, moder a moderately lower uh, pace of uh, PEP purchases for the following quarter, but President Lagarde made it uh, clear that this was not a tapering move and that when uh, PEP is over, they have all other tools available. In our view, this may be a hint that when PEP is over, conditional upon the economic uh, outlook, they could compensate by buying more through other schemes, like the asset purchase program. So with that in mind, we will scan the minutes to see whether this is the case and clear hints that the bank stands ready to offset the end of the PEP by buying more through other programs could encourage more euro selling. Now, finally, on Friday, the main item on uh, the agenda may be the official US employment report for September. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have accelerated to 470,000 from 243,000, while the unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 5.1% from 5.2%. Average hourly earnings are forecast to have slowed to 0.4% month over month from 0.6%, but barring any deviations from the prior monthly prints, this is anticipated to take the year-over-year -year rate up to 4.6% from 4.3%. Overall, all this points to a more decent report uh, than uh, the one we got uh, for August, which combined with Powell's recent remarks that inflation remains elevated for longer than they have, than they have estimated, may encourage market participants to add to bets over a November quantitative easing tapering by the Fed, and perhaps even bring forth their expectations 
their expectations over when the first interest rate hike could take place. Something like that could be translated into further strength in the US dollar and a deeper correction in equities. The opposite could be true if we get a disappointing set of numbers. At the same time, with the US employment report, we get uh, jobs data for September from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is expected to have slid to 6.9% from 7.1%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 60,000 jobs uh, during the month after adding 90.2 thousand the month, the month before. At its prior gathering, the Bank, of the Bank of Canada kept its policy untouched and maintained the guidance that the economic slack would be absorbed sometime in the second half of 2022, which means this is when they expect to start raising interest rates. Now, following the latest disappointing um, uh, data, especially the economic uh, contraction in, uh, in, uh, in the second quarter, Many participants uh, may have been expecting the bank to announce a delay in its tapering plans. However, that was not the case at that meeting. Even Governor Tiff Macklem, after, in the days after the meeting, said that he and his colleagues are moving closer to a time when continuing to add stimulus through quantitative easing won't be necessary. Therefore, another round of disemployment numbers from Canada could add to the case of an October tapering and could support some of the loony. However, the currency could also be well affected by today's decision on oil output by OPEC and uh, its uh, and its uh, other and and other major uh, producers. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.